Hi, everybody. My name is Allison Glenn. I am Associate Curator of Contemporary Art at Crystal Bridges, and I'm here to take you through Hank Willis Thomas, All Things Being Equal. Hank Willis Thomas invites us to consider how popular visual culture shapes our understanding of the world. This is the first comprehensive survey of the American artist's career spanning over 20 years of his practice. I snuck in. The first artwork I want to talk about is I Am a Man. This is a multi-painting artwork that is inspired by the sanitation workers strike in Memphis, Tennessee on March 28, 1968, as you can see here in this photo. Ernest Withers' photograph of men holding placards declaring, I am a man, inspired Thomas to transform the phrase into a poem and recognize that our consciousness is our greatest gift. The artist talks about when he was born, the phrase, I am the man, was really popular. So he thought how interesting it was that eight years before he was born, men that looked like him had to argue for their humanity, argue for their personhood. And so this work is a really great representation of what photo-based conceptual art can look like. So although I Am A Man is not a series of photographs, it is inspired by a famous archival image from the civil rights movement in the United States. Hank Willis Thomas created Bearing Witness, Murder's Wake to capture portraits of all of the people that were impacted by his cousin Sangha's murder. There's some familiar faces here. This is the artist's mother, Deborah Willis, MacArthur Genius. This is the artist himself. This is his longtime friend and collaborator, Kimberly who worked with Hank to create this video here. This work acknowledges the deep impact of a single death and in turn, the thousands of communities forever changed by gun violence in the United States. With this large scale quilt, Thomas reimagines Pablo Picasso's iconic painting, Guernica, which takes its title from the Spanish town that was bombed by Nazi forces Picasso's Guernica was seen in its day as a provocative political statement about the horrors of war. Nearly the same scale as Picasso's mural, Thomas's quilt is pieced together from professional basketball jerseys. This work suggests that combative team sports are a stand-in for war. Do you see your favorite team? What I really love about Hank's work is that it's accessible to so many different kinds of people. You could come to this work with a good understanding of sports, of art history, of world history, of quilting. You can come to this work from so many different places and really be able to bring your knowledge to it and take away new information and new understanding. In the unbranded section, we have a series of photographs that are taken from popular advertisements. There's two bodies of work here. One is called Unbranded, A Century of White Women, 1915 to 2015. The dates here are really important. In 1915, suffragette parade. And in 2015, Hillary Rodham Clinton running for president. To create these photographs, the artist appropriated imagery from popular magazine advertisements, removing all of the logos and text. So what we're left with is the image, which has so much to say on its own. With unbranded reflections in black corporate America, 1968 to 2008, Hank Willis Thomas has taken popular magazine advertisements from 1968 to 2008 that were featured in publications that were primarily geared to the burgeoning African-American market. 1968 is the year that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis. And 2008 is when Barack Hussein Obama became the 44th president of the United States of America. 
What strikes me about this body of work is that when you remove all the text and logos, what emerges are the subtleties that really become embedded in the framework of how we as a society approach gender, race, class, and sexual orientation. So these lenticulars are super wild, but they give a really great example of embodied viewing. So as you kind of move your body across the surface of them, different information emerges. On this side, we see history is present. Past is past. Past is present. This one here, black imitates black. Black imitates white, white imitates black. Whoa. What about this one? Ads imitate ads. Art imitates art. Ads imitate art. Life imitates life. I mean, seriously, it's been so nice to get dressed up. I've been wearing basically yoga pants, pajamas for two weeks. The artist paints the surface of these photographs with retroreflective paint. And what happens here is that some of the information becomes available and the other information is hidden until light or a flash shines directly onto it. Thomas reproduces historic photographs pulled from public archives, including libraries, museums, and newspapers, and then recontextualizes the way we encounter them. In doing so, he invites us to consider how our past continues to shape our present. In this collection of works, Thomas reveals protest images from the civil rights era that many may have not seen in years, if ever. By activating these images with a cell phone flash, the photographs and the people in them come to life in the present moment, inviting us to consider their continued relevance today. The Punctum sculptures rely heavily on the medium of photography. Thomas based these works on photographs that he found in archives that document anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. I'm gonna show you my favorite. This life-size sculpture is based on the famous photograph taken in 1964 by Danny Lyon during an event organized by the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in Cambridge, Maryland. The photograph depicts civil rights activist Clifford Vaz being seized by many armed National Guardsmen, grabbing his legs, arms, and neck in front of the demonstrators who are trying to pull him back. The work is placed in the center of the room, which gives the viewer the opportunity to see this work fully from every angle. The tension is apparent and the craftsmanship is exquisite. Notice how this sculpture, the entirety of it, is balancing solely on the arm of the figure. The collective's name is a reference to American artist Norman Rockwell's iconic paintings of Franklin D. Roosevelt's Four Freedoms. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom from fear, freedom from want, freedom of worship. In 2016, Thomas and Emily Schur asked, what would Norman Rockwell's Four Freedoms look like in today's America? To align Roosevelt's message with the contemporary time, Schur and Thomas restaged the Four Freedoms, creating depictions of America that are rich in diversity, and that represent the current landscape of America. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and let's end with a quote from Hank himself, a powerful reminder in these times. Love is the most effective educational tool of all.